Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how to do what they call knockout text which is quite popular for using with vinyl on clothing or t-shirts or home decor. This was a request by somebody from my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to do it in Inkscape which is really easy and in the second video I'm going to show you how to do it in Canvas which is a little bit more tricky. Not difficult, just a bit more tricky to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is bring in an image that I've downloaded off the internet and I'm going to trace it. Now, I'm only going to go through this part quickly because I've done videos in the past about tracing images in Inkscape. If you go to my channel and go to the playlist and look under Inkscape, you'll find several videos I've done on auto tracing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a blank page here in Inkscape. I'm going to come to File, Import, and I'm going to go and find the image that I've downloaded off the internet and open it. I'm just going to say OK to this, and this is the image. And you can see down here it tells you an image. I'm going to hold the Control key down, and I'm just going to drag a corner out just to make it a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it better on screen. With this image selected, I'm going to come to Path, trace bitmap, I'm going to use colour, I'm going to make sure remove background is selected and because it's only black I'm just going to leave the scans on too and say OK and close the box down. Now I'm going to drag the top copy away. The top copy now if you look here and look at the bottom it tells you it's a path. This was our original image so I can now get rid of that. So that's our path that I'm going to use with the text. So I'm going to come to the text tool. I've got my text set to 72 and I've got the default set te text set as impact. I'm going to click once on the page and with the capital locks on my keyboard on, I'm going to type happy, then do carriage return and type Christmas. And then while they're still selected, and what I want to do, this first one here, I want to bring the spacing up. So I'm just going to keep selecting this arrow and bring the text closer. Now you don't want them overlapping, but you want them close. So you can see I've only got a tiny little gap there. Then the next box here, I'm going to bring the spacing of the letters together. So I'm just going to click it once and bring them in. You may have to click this a few more times. Then I'm going to hit the select icon to select the word. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go path, object to path. Then I'm going to go to object, ungroup, which now makes each one of these individual letters a separate letter all of its own. I'm going to start up here on the map with a left click and drag an imaginary box just around the word happy to select all those letters. And with just those five letters selected, I'm going to go to Path, Combine, and that now combines them. It's a different process than using Group. Okay, so for this technique, you need to make, you just need to do Path, Combine. Now I'm going to left click somewhere down here and drag an imaginary box just around the word Christmas or the letters of the word Christmas and do the same thing. You can see they're all individual at the moment because you've got bounding boxes around them all and I'm going to go to path, combine. Now I'm going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect and then drag an imaginary box around both sets of letters. I'm going to come up to here, up here to the align box. In here I'm going to make sure a line selection area is selected. Yours may be on page or anything like that. So just want select selection area. And then I'm going to click this top box here, which is to align them centrally on the vertical axis. And with them both centrally selected and nothing else touched, I'm now going to go path combine again. And that combines both the, the sets of words now. Now I'm just going to drag them out and make them bigger and get rid of the alignment box. Now I'm going to use my Christmas tree. Just so that you can see it, I'm going to right click on the green down here 
and choose set fill and I like to have a stroke on so again I'm going to right click on the green and set the stroke now if it goes all peculiar like this yours might not but if it does you come up here to the um, fill and stroke icon and you select that and you make sure that you're on stroke style not stroke paint stroke style then in here you may be on millimeters inches anything you want to be on pixels and then in the width you just want to make sure that whatever's there is selected and type one on your keyboard and hit enter then close your box down and your tree will go back to normal now I'm going to position this tree over the words while it's selected I'm going to use this icon here to bring it to the top and I'm just going to resize it and drag it out until it looks about the size I think I'm going to want now you've got to get all this how you want it and the size you want it before you do anything else so the tree is a path as you can see down here and my combined letters are a path and my trees on top I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both right click and hit duplicate and drag the duplicate off to the side and I'm just going to work with the first set of letters and shape so I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both and I'm going to come to path intersection and just move that one there for now then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around these and this time I'm going to do path difference now I'm going to select the letters and I'm just going to get again right click and set the fill and the stroke to green and again it's gone odd, odd and peculiar so select the fill come back make sure you're on pixels take that bounce that back down to one and hit enter and now that's taken it back down to normal and then I'm just going to close that box I'm going to zoom in on here and I'm just going to line up the tree in the words and that's how you do knockout text and that's really easy now I'm going to show you what you need to do for when you come to want to cut it in vinyl so I'm just going to zoom back to the mat and then I'm just going to leave them there for now now I'm just going to come over to the shapes icon and I'm just going to drag out a box it doesn't matter whether it's a rectangle or a square or whatever it is and I'm just going to position it just above the letters I'm going to right click and select duplicate which puts a duplicate directly on top and I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard which just lets me move this only in a horizontal axis without being able to move it up or down and then I'm going to let go I'm going to select both of these come to a line and just make sure that they are both aligned together I'm going to hit top and they've not moved so they were aligned while they're both selected I'm going to go to object and group so just these two boxes are a group with them selected I'm going to right click and hit duplicate and then with the duplicate is directly on top I'm going to come back down to the green right click set the fill right click set the stroke so I've got the green on top and the blue underneath I'll just undo that now I want to group the two green sections in fact I'm just going to send that to the bottom and make the blue black because my words are black aren't they so I'm going to right click on the black set fill and set stroke now I'm going to send that to the bottom so I've got my green on the top and my black behind I'm going to select the green hold the shift key down and select the green tree and I'm going to go to object group now I'm going to send that to the bottom and I'm going to select the black boxes hold the shift key down select the black words and go object group so now if I click away and just click on the black I've got those two as a group and these two as a group so I'm just going to undo so I hope that makes sense the whole thing isn't grouped together I can select the green and move it out of the way but 
the two lots of green are a group and the two lots of black are a group. So now you just need to go to file, save as, and then you need to give it a name and save it as an SVG. So that it automatically by default always comes up with drawing.svg and the word is always highlighted. So I'm going to save this as tree knockout leave the dot svg as it is and then just make sure we're on plain svg and save now if for any reason that doesn't work just go back and do save as and change it as an inkscape svg in fact i'll save it as both just going to give it a different name i'll call it knockout one and save it as an svg so i've now got two files on my desktop now SVGs you can use directly in, in your machine so you could save that file just as it is and open it and hopefully because you've saved them as separate groups when you bring it in the machine you should be able to separate them but if you're in any doubt just separate them both in Inkscape like this and then save them. So I'm just going to open Canvas quickly. I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas now and I'm just going to come to SVG. I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved the two files. You can see them here. This is the first one, Tree Knockout SVG, which I saved as a plain SVG. I'm going to choose it and say OK and see how it comes into Canvas. Now, in Canvas, the green is behind. So if I select the black, hold the shift key down, select the second black box and select the words. I should be able to drag them out of the way. Yeah, I can. So I'm going to undo everything and put the, the tree back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the box, hold the shift key down, select the second black box, select the black words and go object group and just move those out of the way. Now, I can drag an imaginary box around all the green sections and go object group. So now you might want to keep these separate on your map, save them here, give them a name and save them in canvas. Just for the video, I'm going to delete these and I'm going to open the other one and see how that looks. So I'm going to come back to the SVG, come to choose file. I'm going to choose the one that I saved as an Inkscape SVG and just see how that comes into canvas and that's coming with nothing just a tiny little dot up there so you do have to save as a plain SVG when you're in Inkscape so I hope you found that helpful please give the video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video thank you